Hello, my name is Maria Miller from MathMammoth.com. In this video, I want to show you how to teach the topic of multiplying fractions by fractions. And while it is an easy topic, because the rule for it is so easy, I want to show you a method of guided discovery where students can discover this rule by themselves. Okay, let's start with half times one third. And remember that this of here, I mean this multiplication sign here, translates into of or vice versa. So we think of this as half of one third and here I have a picture of one third of a pie and I take half of it. And so of course it is this part now here. And to find out how much that is of the whole pie, let me divide these other parts into two new parts too. And now we can see clearly that this is one sixth of the original pie. Another example, one-third times one-fourth. It means one-third of one-fourth. Uh, one-fourth of a pie, I'm going to eat one-third of the remaining pie. And so I divide this remaining piece into three new pieces. And this is what I eat. And to see what part it is of the original pie, I divide these into three pieces too. So now I can see that there's 12 equal sized pieces, and so this is one-twelfth because there was four pieces, each one divided into three new ones. Four times three is twelve. And when, after you give students several of these kind of exercises, where there's one over something times one over something, fractions of the form one over something, they will easily see, soon see, that the answer always has the denominator where you multiply these two denominators. So we arrive at the shortcut that if the fractions are of this form, one over something, then the answer will be just, you just multiply the denominators to get the answer. And um, from this one we then go on to fractions where the numerator is not one. For example, two-thirds times one-fourth. And we will think of it this way. Find two-thirds of one-fourth. I'll first find one-third of it. One-third of one-fourth. So that is now we already know how to solve it using the shortcut even. It's going to be 1 12th, right? This piece here. And so 2 thirds of this piece will be double as much. It will be 2 twelfths. It would be these two pieces here. And so we get 2 twelfths. Oh, here's another similar example. It is 4 fifths times 1 half. And the second fraction here is still of the form 1 over something. Just like here. To find four fifths, of, four fifths of one half, I first find one fifth of it. One fifth of one half. I divide this into five pieces. Or I can use my shortcut. It will be one tenth. This piece here. And so four times that, or four fifths of it will be four times that here that I got here, four tenths. One more time. If one-fifth of one-half is one-tenth, then four-fifths of it will be four, four times as much, right? So we get four-tenths. And over here, students will start seeing the shortcut that all you need to do is multiply four times one is four, and five times two is ten, which is exactly the rule or shortcut for multiplying fractions. And I, I wrote it here just as a reminder that uh, at this point in your study, you can give it. And... Um, it is a over b, if your fraction is a over b, times c over d, you multiply the top numbers, a times c, multiply the bottom numbers, b times d. Then it's time to practice with just um, multiplication problems without any visual models. Here's one of them, 12 over 5 times 1 eighth. We go 12 times 1 equals 12, and then 5 times 8 equals 40. Now, you need to notice that this fraction simplifies. Can't leave it like that. Both 12 and 40 are divisible by 4, so we will get 3 over 10, 3 tenths. Now this problem is actually not a problem of multiplying fractions by fractions. I threw it in there because students need to be reminded that this is not going to be solved exactly the same way as, as... It's not going to be solved by 6 times 2 over 6 times 7, which is a common mistake students can make. They need to remember that when it's a whole number times a fraction, you go 6 times 2, 
and then your denominator doesn't change, it is 7. Or they can remember that 6 is actually 6 over 1 as a fraction, and then they can use the shortcut as here. This, of course, can be written as a mixed number then. Okay. I also like to give students some problems where there's a missing factor. Uh, that those are a little bit more challenging. And of these two, this is easier. Oh, I'm sorry, this is missing the number one. Sorry. But anyway, this is easier. Let's think of a fraction that can go in here so that one times something equals five. Very easy. Five goes there. And then six times something equals 24. Four has to go there. So this would actually be the mixed number one and one fourth. This is trickier, but to get started, you can show students to think that instead of 1 here, think of a fraction there that would simplify to 1. For example, you know, 15 over 15 or 20 over 20, some fraction here that simplifies to 1. And then, maybe after a while, they will arrive into the answer that works 3 times 7, 7 times 3, for example, would give you 21 over 21. There are other answers too, they might find that 42 over 42 here will work also. Okay, now here's one word problem that uses this concept. And when we have the concept of fractions multiplied by fractions, then the word problems would be having this of here, fractional part of a fraction. So there was one fourth of the cake left and Anne ate two thirds of that. What part of the original cake did she eat? This is a very easy problem, but students need to connect it with the fraction multiplication. In other words, the difficulty is in connecting this problem with fraction multiplication. The multiplication is easy. One fourth here is how much is left. And then, and it's two thirds of it, so we divide this remaining piece into three parts, and then and it's two thirds of it. And as you've seen with all that I've explained, this is solved simply by multiplying these two fractions and we get 2 over 12. So the answer is 2 twelfths or it simplifies to 1 sixth. Lastly, I want to show you a little bit of a proof for the rule here. This time I am taking two fractions that neither one of them has like 1 over something, okay? So we'll look at this more complicated case. If I use the shortcut, it is very easy. I go 2 times 3 is 6, and then 5 times 4 is 20, which this one simplifies to 3 tenths. If I don't use the shortcut, but I think logically, then I will see a justification for this rule, which is also important for students. We shouldn't always just give them rules without justifications. Okay, and to solve this, I'll start with the one-fifth of one-fourth. You know, just one over something, one over something. I drew one-fourth there, and one-fifth of it is, if I divide this into five pieces, and if I divide these other pieces into five pieces, you can see that one-fifth of one-fourth will be one-twentieth, just like I did earlier. Okay, now two-fifths of one-fourth would be double as much. I take two-fifths of, of it over here, it's double as much, two-twentieth. Then here, one-fourth of two-fifths, I just switch the numbers, because multiplication is commutative. And so that means that I can switch the order of the numbers, and the of is basically the multiplication sign here. So one-fourth of two-fifths is also two-twentieths. And lastly, three-fourths of two-fifths will be three times as much as what this was. So it is six-twentieths. And there, we have our answer matching the one we got from the shortcut.